I'm Senator Dick Durbin. Welcome to my Capitol Report, A Different View. In the entire history of the United States Senate, only 44 women have served. Currently, 20 of those women are serving. This last election really made history. It's the largest number of women ever serving at one time in the United States Senate. The four new Democratic women senators are with me today, and I welcome them to the show. You'll get a chance to meet them, and I'll get a chance to ask a few questions about their lives, their families, and what brought them to this public career. I'll introduce them in no particular order, but Maisie Hirano from the state of Hawaii, formerly a member of Congress and House of Representatives, yes. and now elected to the As United States. As we say in Hawaii, aloha, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> aloha. Elizabeth Warren, born in Oklahoma, now mm -hmm. representing the state of Massachusetts, the first woman ever elected in mm -hmm. your state mm -hmm. to serve in the United States Senate. That's Welcome, right. Elizabeth. Thank you. Heidi Heidkamp from North Dakota, the first woman senator from her state, if I'm I not am. mistaken. I first elected woman. First <laughs> elected woman senator from her state. That's right. She's elected to several state positions, yeah, your I was first the federal state. Tax spot. commissioner, and then I was attorney general for eight years. Tammy Baldwin from our neighboring state of Wisconsin formerly a congresswoman from the Madison area mm -hmm. of uh, Wisconsin and now elected to the first woman in Wisconsin history. Yes, indeed. Well, congratulations to you. So let's Thank start you. with you, Tammy, since you're our neighbor here to the north. What in the world prompted you to get into public life? Oh, my. I The first uh, thoughts I ever had of public service uh, was in uh, middle school. Uh, but I... I and it was a, an aha moment for a young person when I realized that one person or a small group of people could really make a difference. Mm -hmm. you, it's great when young people have that, that moment of understanding. Uh, but it was a combination of my early interest and my passion about the issue of health care that prompted me to run for the Dane County Board of Supervisors as a first-year law student. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, now I had a, a, a particular mentor professor who was trying to counsel me uh, against that. He said, if you apply yourself, you could be a really great lawyer. And then he had a twinkle in his eye as he looked at me and said, but if you go for this running for office thing, you'll have my full support. And the rest is history. <laughs> it sure is. And Heidi. Your background is not from a large town. Tell us about mm -hmm. where you were born and how you got into this business. Well, I grew up in a town of 90 people. Not 90,000, <laughs> 90. My family was one-tenth the population. Mm -hmm. um, that we, my mother had uh, seven kids in nine years. And wow. after she had my brother Joel, who some people know, um, she gave up. <laughs> that was it. She was done. Um, but, but my mom was a school cook and a janitor, and my dad was a seasonal construction worker. And, you know, when you think about it, you think about how does someone with that kind of background end up in the United States Senate? And it's only in a country like the United States of America where that happens, where we all have equal opportunity, or at least we did. And I'm here because people invested in student loans um, for, for middle class and lower income class kids and because people mentored me and one great mentor for me was Senator Kent Conrad and I, it is such an honor for me to be taking his seat. He's, he's been a true friend and a, uh, a true mentor for me and he's the one who forced me into elective politics. As I told him, I was going to be with him all the way. He said, if you want to be with me, then run for something. Well, he was so excited when yeah. you announced you were going to run. He's a very good friend. A terrific. I can't yeah. count Red. We miss him. A terrific yeah. Senator. We're glad you're here. Yeah. So, Maisie Hirano, mm. your family story is different than most. Very much so. In fact, when I talk about America as a land of opportunity, I speak from personal experience because I was not even born in this country. And my mother very courageously uh, plotted and planned in secret when uh, she was in Japan. And I never did get to know my father uh, because of the terrible family situation. But she plotted and planned to bring her children to this country so that we could have a better chance at life. And so she did that. I was almost eight years old when she brought me to a country I never even dream, dreamt of. Glad she picked Hawaii. Warm. <laughs> <laughs> really Lovely people. Um, but she showed me that one person can make a difference, and she changed my life. And she still you know, lives with us, and, and she is my continuing inspiration. But how I decided to make a difference through the political arena was when I was in college. And of course, you know, I, I 
paid my way through college through the work study program, so the federal support was there. Uh, it was during the Vietnam War, and I protested the war. Began to think about what I could, what more I could do to make a difference, and just marching around wasn't going to do it. And some of my close activist friends, uh, we all decided to go off to law school. And in fact, you and I have that in common because uh, I went to Georgetown. It took me 15 years to pay off those loans, <laughs> but um, a lot of us decided to go to law school and and, and use that. Uh, credential as a way to run for office. Many of us ran for office and uh, this is about my 30th year holding office in Hawaii. And you didn't mention that I am the first woman in Hawaii. To I get should have. I, to the we US. have firsts yeah. all around all here. Around. Okay. But before we get off your mother's as a subject, mm -hmm. I think you have something that you brought yes. for us today. You yes, to my show mother us. has gotten actually quite famous in Hawaii, in my opinion, for <laughs> this wonderful guava jelly. We, she even has her own label. This is her picture. We have a guava tree at our house, and one day she decided to figure out how to make guava jelly, and she's been making guava jelly ever since. And people who are jelly worthy, like you four, <laughs> get this. And I always say to everybody, there's more where this came from if you play your cards right. All right. <laughs> so this is from my house to each of Thank yours you. with a lot of love and aloha. Thank you, Maisie. It takes her all day to make this. Well, we will value it, I'm sure. Thank you. Elizabeth? Yes. I can recall when you used to come and give lectures and talks yep. to the Senate Democratic Caucus about so many different issues, and there came a day when a few of us called and said, it's time for you to run. <laughs> so what were you thinking about when you were making this decision to run for public office? Well, you know, unlike my colleagues here who had figured out you run for this office and then you kind of <laughs> run for that <laughs> office and had these early, early commitments to do this, remember, I started out as a special needs teacher. <laughs> uh, I started out with little kids. I ended up going to law school because mm -hmm. I figured out you could affect a lot of people instead of just your classroom. And then right back into teaching, writing, doing the research, what's happening to America's working families, America's middle class families, and just how they're getting pounded, just pounded, and never thought politics was going to be it for me. I was, I figured you were a stronger man. <laughs> and You were uh, normal. Yeah, my job, <laughs> my job was to teach, my job was to do the research and to offer it up. And then you were the one, because you were the one who first introduced the consumer agency, right? We remember these mm -hmm. things. And you fought on the bankruptcy bill to try to help families that needed a safety net. And I, I thought that was going to stay my job forever. And um, you all called and said, you know, you could do a lot of good if you get out there and fight this fight. And um, so that's why I got into it. You did. It. What I find interesting, uh, there are so many women that are getting involved in politics at every level. And it's interesting, uh, my wife is helping a number of uh, young women, or women of all ages for that matter, to get involved and run for office in Illinois. And we've got to sit down and go through this explanation of how is it different when a woman runs for office as opposed to a man, or is it different? Heidi, what was your circumstance there? Well, I mean, I always, I always believe that at the end, when we talk about the women of the Senate, that we shortchange a little bit because we focus so much on gender. And you've just heard really three pretty remarkable stories here. Uh, but it, the quality of the women who are serving, their interests are very diverse, but yet their passion for service is just unsurpassed. And, and so I always like to mention that we have not only 20 great women, we have 20 women of great quality who are going to bring different ideas and diversity in a lot of ways to the United States Senate. But when I encourage young women, I say, first off, it's not always about a gender. It, as, as, as we say, it is about making sure that we don't ignore half of the talent pool in this country when we're seeking leaders. Because if you say women aren't qualified, then you're taking half of the people and saying, we aren't going to look to you to leadership. I also think that we bring different life experiences. Whether, whether it's, it's in academics or whether it's in politics or whether it's in uh, commercial law, whatever it is, 
we bring different experiences to the United States Senate, but we bring the experience of being moms or special education teachers, and we know the challenges there, or understand the challenges of being pregnant, understand the challenges of, of wanting a different life for people who maybe their sexual orientation is a little different. So it's that diversity that really enriches the Senate, and we need it at every level. I have to tell you just, just one quick story. I, I go into groups of women, and the reason why women don't run very often is, is family reasons. But the second greatest reason is they don't feel qualified. Mm -hmm. And I always say, have you met the Congress? <laughs> have you met the legislature? <laughs> have you met the people who are serving? Because clearly you're qualified. And so that's a message that we need to send it's more the old often. Harry Truman story. Yeah. You know, yeah. When I first got here, I couldn't believe I was elected to the Senate. And after a while, I couldn't believe the rest of these yeah. people were elected. <laughs> so Tammy, in, in the state of Wisconsin, running yeah. statewide as a woman, what were the challenges? I mean, what were the good parts of it, but the tough parts of it? Well, it's interesting. I wanted to just dovetail on something that uh, Heidi had mentioned about her observations of women and what uh, might hold them back. I mean, this has been an area that's been studied, and you, you, you really do hit right on a couple of the ones that come up over and over again. Um, women say, well, I don't know enough about the subject matter or jurisdiction of this uh, you know, this office, so I can't possibly run. And then, you know, you ask yourself, did any of the men who were standing uh, for office, uh, you know, do that type of research, or did they just say, you know, I can do it? Uh, <laughs> my, my moment again in that was, uh, as a first-year law student, I was um, monitoring some activity on the county board, and I just remember this moment when I'm sitting in the gallery going, I'm as smart as any one of those people. <laughs> I mean, really, I am. Um, I could do this. Uh, the other thing is, oftentimes women find they need to be asked. And it, you know, a couple of you said, uh, you know, somebody came and said, "You should think about doing this." Um, I was asked to run for a higher office at every point until I ran for Senate, and that was the first time that I contemplated taking a leap and said. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> you know, I, I did my research. I did my studying, um, and I would say the biggest hurdle uh, was especially the you know the early doubters. Uh, you know, a lot of people who said, "Oh, this is going to be tough." They've seen a lot of the changes yeah. that happened in Wisconsin and politics. You were running against it, a former governor. Well, at, at, when I got in the race, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, there was it, I, I got in early, and uh, there was a four-way Republican primary. Um, and people had looked at what was happening in Wisconsin. Now, you're you know, south of the border. You've maybe noticed that we've had a little bit of protest. Uh, we had How some... many elections <laughs> in one year did you have? Oh, my goodness. Four? Yeah. It, more than that uh, in terms of the number of recalls, et cetera. And so I think there were a lot of folks who thought it was a real long shot. And so part of our, our initial struggle was we can do this. And who are these pundits to tell us in a democracy what the outcome is before the elections even happen? This is up to the voters to decide. So Maisie, what about Hawaii? This was the first, of course you well, were running ultimately <laughs> against a woman. That's right. The same woman uh, who ran against me, we ran against each other in the year 2002 for governor. It is very true that for women, and there are studies now with more and more women running, there are more subjects to ask these questions. It matters to women that they are asked, that they are encouraged. This is why groups such as, entities such as Emily's List do matter because they come in and they provide us not only financial support but all kinds of other support. Now Heidi and I have the unique experience of having been our party's nominees for governor. Heidi in 2000, me in 2002. And I found that while gender may not be that much of an issue and we actually are running, it does matter when you're running for the executive office because then you are the guy. <laughs> and I found more attitudes relating to my capability, whether I could make tough decisions when I was running for governor, but not when I was running for the legislative offices. If Did you find add, that to be yeah, so? If I can just add to that. I had negotiated the tobacco settlement. I had been tax commissioner yes. and negotiated multi-million dollar tax settlements. And when they did focus groups on my race, we don't know if she can do the deals for North Dakota. Yes. Toughness. Yeah, she's not tough in, enough in for issue. North Dakota. And so, and, and plus they have a vision of a first family and people would say, you don't look like a governor. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. and, and, and ho hopefully we're going to change, but right now in this country there is only one Democratic woman governor. Mm 
in this country, and she was just elected. And so we've gone from a high of, I think, four down to one. And so what we celebrate, what we're doing here, I think there is a whole unique set of challenges mm -hmm. for women running for governor. For governor, that's right, because the executive office is a very different kind of office. People have different attitudes and expectations. I found that out.